infinite limits happen when we evaluate the limit of f of x as x approaches a from either the right or left is equal to positive or negative infinity. Now, limits at infinity is when we want to evaluate the limit of f of x as x approaches either positive or negative infinity. So what is this equal to? Well, of course, it depends on the function f of x. For example, we want the limit of, let's just have 2x squared minus x plus 3 over uh, 3x squared minus 5x plus 1. Let's say as x approaches positive infinity. If we are evaluating limits at infinity, then we always have to look out for the highest power of x in the whole function. So it, that's in the numerator and in the denominator. So in this case, the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator are just the same. So the highest power of x is x squared here. So what we'll do is divide each and every uh, term in the numerator and in the denominator by that highest power. So it's 2x squared in the first term divided by x squared. Okay, minus x divided by x squared plus 3 divided by x squared all over the denominator 3x squared divided by x squared minus 5x divided by x squared and then plus 1 divided by x squared okay and evaluate this limit as x approaches positive infinity all right so let's simplify each and every term we'll have the limit of 2 minus 1 over x plus 3 over x squared divided by 3 minus 5 over x plus 1 over x squared as x approaches positive infinity. Now take note that x approaches positive infinity. It means to say that x is a very, very, very large number. So this quotient over here, 1 over x, 3 over x squared, 5 over x, 1 over x squared, okay? All of this tend to, the, the quotient tend to zero, okay? Because if you are dividing a constant, a small constant like 1, 3, 5, and 1, and you divide it by a number very, very large, so the quotient, let's say 1 divided by 1 million, it's not a very large number, but it's, it's, uh, it's uh, relatively large, so 1 divided by 1 million is already a very, very small number, close to 0. What if you make x bigger than 1 million? Okay, squaring 1 million like here, squaring 1 million. So 3 divided by 1 million squared is a number closer to 0, right? So this quotient, all of this, these encircled quotients tend to 0. Okay, so therefore when we evaluate the limit of the function that we have as x approaches positive infinity, then we are actually evaluating the limit of 2 minus 1 over x. Let me just rewrite everything. x, x squared over 3 minus 5 over x plus 1 over x squared as x approaches positive infinity. Then we are just evaluating the limit of the numerator, the limit of a constant, 2, is the, lim uh, the constant itself, so it's 2. Evaluating the limit of 1 over x as x approaches, no, this is positive infinity. Sorry. So it must be positive infinity. Okay. Um, the limit of 1 over x in the numerator as x approaches positive infinity tends to 0. The limit of 3 over x squared as x approaches positive infinity tends to 0. In the denominator, the limit of 3, the constant, is the constant itself, 3, 
minus the limit of 5 over x as x approaches positive infinity, it tends to 0. Plus the limit of 1 over x squared as x approaches positive infinity, it tends to 0 also. So the answer is just 2 thirds. Okay, this is the limit of the function 2x squared minus x plus 3 divided by 3x squared minus 5x plus 1 as x approaches positive infinity. So it's equal to 2 thirds. Another example, number 2. Let's say we want the limit of 4x squared minus uh, 3x plus 2 divided by, and then let's have 5x cubed minus 4x squared plus 7x. All right, as x approaches positive infinity. Okay, <clears throat> as x approaches positive infinity, it needs to say that x is approaching a very, very large positive number. So, again, when evaluating limits at infinity, we have to look at the highest power of x in the numerator and in the denominator. In this case, it's x cubed. So, we divide everything by x cubed and we get the limit of 4x squared divided by x cubed minus 3x over x cubed plus 2 over x cubed divided by 5x cubed over x cubed minus 4x squared over x cubed plus 7x as x approaches positive infinity. Now we simplify the function and we get the limit of 4 over x minus 3 over x squared plus 2 over x cubed divided by 5 minus 4 over x plus 7. Now we have to divide 7x by x cubed also here. So 7 over x squared. So take the limit as x approaches positive infinity. And we evaluate each and every term in the numerator and in the denominator as x approaches positive infinity. So let's go to the first term first in the numerator, the limit of 4 over x as x approaches positive infinity. So it tends to 0 because um, as x approaches positive infinity, so the quotient of 4 and a very, very large positive number is almost 0. So the limit of that is equal to 0 minus the limit of 3 over x squared is also 0. And then plus the limit of 2 over x cubed also tends to 0 divided by the limit of the constant 5 in the denominator is, of course, the constant itself, 5, minus the limit of 4 over x as x approaches positive infinity. So the, uh, the limit is approaching 0 as well. And finally, the limit of 7 over x squared as x approaches positive infinity also tends to 0. So what we get is 0 over 5, or the quotient, 0. Okay, so this is the limit of the given function, 4x squared minus 3x plus 2 over 5x cubed minus 4x squared plus 7x as x approaches positive infinity. It's equal to 0. Now, if I want to evaluate the limit of the same function, the same function in number 2. So it's 4x squared minus 3x plus 2 over 5x cubed minus 4x squared plus 7x. This time as x approaches negative infinity. So what will change in our solution? Okay. As x approaches negative infinity, so it means to say that x is a approaching a very, very big negative number. Okay? Say one, negative 1 million. So when you cube a negative number, remember the highest possible, uh, the highest power of x here is x cubed. Cubing a negative number is still a negative number. Right? 
So, when we divide every term in the numerator and in the denominator by the highest power of x, we have to take note that x cubed is a negative number. So, we have to divide 4x squared by negative x cubed. So, it changes the divisor now. So, it's negative uh, So, negative 3x, or minus x, I'm sorry. This is positive already. I have the minus sign already. Minus 3x divided by negative x cubed. Plus 2 over negative x cubed. All over 5 divided by negative x cubed. Minus 4x squared over negative x cubed. Plus 7x over negative x cubed. So, the limit as x approaches negative infinity. So, when the highest uh, exponent of x that is present in the function is an odd number, so the sign of infinity here is important. All right? But when the highest exponent of x in the function is just an even number, the sign of infinity here will not be very important in the solution. Because... Um, Raising a negative number to an even exponent, okay, will always be equal to a positive number. So, it doesn't change anything in the solution. So, here, it's now the limit of, it's a negative 4 over x. Okay, so, plus 3 over x squared. And then, minus 2 over x cubed. Divided by... It's a negative, no, uh, we have x cubed here, sorry again about that again. It's a negative 5 minus, or plus 4 over x minus 7 over x squared as x approaches negative infinity. Now when we evaluate the limit, we evaluate the limit of each and every term again in the numerator and in the denominator. Again, the quotient 4 over x, 3 over x squared, 2 over x cubed, 4 over x, 7 over x cubed, all of them tend to 0 when we evaluate the limit as x approaches negative infinity. Okay, so it's uh, just 0 plus 0 minus 0 over, this is the constant, negative 5, so its limit is negative 5 wherever x approaches, so plus 0 minus 0, and we still get the answer 0, okay? It doesn't change anything for this function alone, but we cannot generalize this, okay? So sometimes there's no change in the answer, but sometimes there is. So, again, whenever x approaches negative infinity, you always have to look at the highest power of x in the in the uh, function and then if the highest exponent of x is an odd number then you have to divide everything or all the terms in the numerator and in the denominator by the negative of the highest power of x that is whenever x approaches negative infinity but if look at the powers in examples 2 and 3 if you have the power of the numerator or the degree of the numerator look at this in example number two is less than the degree of the denominator then our answer will always be zero when evaluating limits as x approaches either positive infinity or negative infinity so like in examples two and three the the, uh, the degree of the numerator is two the degree of the denominator is three so the numerator has a less degree than the denominator, so the answer is zero. So whenever you have that, so generally the limit as x approaches either positive infinity or negative infinity, so the answer will always be zero. But like in example one, Like in example one, so when the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, in our example, this. And so, 
um, you just have to look at the coefficient of the highest powers of x. So in this case, it's 2 and then in the numerator and then 3 in the denominator. So the quotient of that will be the limit of the function as x approaches positive infinity. So it's 2 thirds. That w that's where the answer was obtained. So what happens now if the degree of the numerator is greater than that of the denominator? Just like in the next example. Let's just take uh, the limit of x to the fourth plus 2x minus 1 divided by, let's just have, um, let's just take a simple x minus 1. So let's have x as x approaches, let's, we can have, I think, negative infinity or positive infinity. Anyway, here the highest exponent of x is 4, so it's an even number. As x approaches negative infinity, it means to say that x is a very, very large negative number. Therefore, um, raising that negative number to 4, uh, the answer will still be a uh, positive number. So it doesn't matter whether x approaches negative infinity or positive infinity. So we still divide everything by the highest power, x to the fourth. Okay, so the limit of x to the fourth divided by x to the fourth plus 2x over x to the fourth minus 1 over x to the fourth divided by x over x to the fourth minus 1 over x to the fourth as x approaches negative infinity. Okay, so that's the limit of the constant 1 plus 2 over x cubed minus 1 over x to the fourth over 1 over x cubed minus 1 over x to the fourth as x approaches negative infinity. So evaluating um, e the limit of each and every term in the numerator and in the denominator as x approaches infinity, we'll get for the first term in the numerator, it's the limit of a constant is 1. It's the constant itself, I mean. The limit of 2 over x cubed as x approaches um, neg negative infinity tends to 0. Again, that is... Uh, if x is a very, very large number, and then 2 over the very large number, the quotient is almost 0. So the quotient tends to 0. And the same concept go, applies for 1 over x to the 4th. The limit of that as x approaches negative infinity is 0. Over 1 over the limit of 1 over x cubed. As x approaches negative infinity, tends to 0, minus the limit of 1 over x to the fourth as x approaches negative infinity, it tends to 0. So what we get is 1 over 0. So in infinite limits, we have already discussed that whenever you get a constant over 0, when evaluating limits, the answer will either be a positive infinity or negative infinity, depending on the sign of the numerator and in the denom of the denominator. So the numerator is always a positive number. It is shown by the sign of 1. So 1 is positive, so it will always be a positive number no matter what. And then... In the denominator, we have to look at the sign of the denominator. Our denominator is x minus 1. That's why I chose a very simple expression, x minus 1, so that you can easily see the sign of x minus 1 as x approaches negative infinity. So whenever um, x is a negative, very, very large negative number, the denominator x minus 1 is a negative number also. So x is a negative number, subtract 1 from that, it's still a very, very large negative number. So the denominator is always negative as x approaches negative infinity. So we have here the quotient of a positive number and a negative number. The quotient is in a, another negative number. So the sign of infinity is negative and our answer is negative infinity. So whenever you have 
the degree, uh, whenever you are evaluating the limit of a function as x approaches positive or negative infinity and the degree of the numerator is greater than that of the denominator, the answer will always be either positive infinity or negative infinity. I'll give you more examples in the next video.